Hey everybody, welcome to our beginner's guide for animation in iClone. Now in this tutorial we're going to touch on a number of different topics. Uh, the one thing they have in common is that they all are going to add motion clips to our timeline. So essentially we're going to be blending motions together uh, by combining their motion clips. And we're going to be trying to recreate this sequence of events we see here. This character sitting down and then uh, getting a disappointed look, standing up, and then walking over and doing a little catwalk thing. So essentially we're using a number of different motion tools here, like I said, but we're going to be focusing on motion clips. And we will have individual tutorials that go into more detail on each individual tool, or you can also check our help files or uh, check out the forums as well for more questions. So first of all, we're going to get started on this. I'm going to zoom in on our character. You can see this beautiful dress is from our uh, developer, Seligon, in uh, the marketplace. You can purchase this in the marketplace or from our G6 empowerment pack and the hair is also from the G6 Empowerment Pack and the skin I've just darkened from our regular Heidi just to give her a little bit more variety here. So if you have a character with animation and you want to remove all the animation on your character the simplest thing to do is just go ahead and right click your character and then go remove object animation and now if I press the space bar to uh, play back there is absolutely no animation on my character so we've just removed all the animation for the entire clip. We can press stop to go back to the beginning here. So the first thing I'm going to talk about here is personas. Now every character, uh, every default character that comes with iClone has a persona. And a persona is essentially just a set of motions uh, that is embedded into your character. So if I right click my uh, Heidi character here and I go to uh, a persona here, you can see we can import a persona, remove or export a persona. And then if I go to perform, you can see we have uh, motions here like twirl hair, dance graceful, air dance. And then we have a move uh, walk forward. Now you can change the persona of your character by either importing a persona from the right click menu or you can go over here to your motion tab and you can select persona and then uh, if we want to uh, add a persona here we can do Chuck or Gwyn which are iClone 5 characters or we can do Heidi and Mason which are iClone 6 characters. Let's simply uh, double click on Mason's here and that will apply his and then if I right click on Heidi and I go to perform now instead of uh, danceful, uh, graceful dancing and uh, air dance and stuff like that we'll have uh, motions like bird cage and saloon door in and stuff like that. So some very manly motions for a female character may not be suitable. So let's go ahead and reapply Heidi's motion or Heidi's persona rather here. And then let's apply our first motion of this tutorial. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click on my character and then go to perform. And now we have all of Heidi's motions back. And let's go ahead and select stand to sit. And our character will then sit on this crate that I have conveniently placed behind her. So basically that's our first motion. That's how easy it is to apply a motion um, from a character's persona. Now if I press F3, this is the most important hotkey you'll learn by the way, F3 to go into the timeline here. This is where all your animation takes place. So I need to go ahead and find Heidi in my uh, track project list here, uh, track list here rather, and I'm gonna select Heidi from the avatar section. And you can see under Heidi in the motion track, there is a motion clip called stand to sit. And this is the motion clip that we just applied to our character. And be aware that if you have soft cloth physics on your character and you slide back and forth, it's going to uh, have a pretty weird result. So you might see some uh, wardrobe malfunctions in this tutorial. Now this motion clip is what we've just applied. What I want to do next is apply another motion clip. So anywhere after this first motion clip has been applied, I'm going to apply another motion clip, but this time I'm going to be using a different tool. Now to find that tool, I need to go to the Modify panel, to the Animation tab, and we're going to be using this Motion Puppet tool here. So if I click on that, the Motion Puppet uh, window will come up here, and I'm just going to move this over here. Now there's, these are a number of different loopable motions, and like I mentioned, we'll have a separate tutorial that goes into more detail on this, but feel free to open up this uh, window and experiment by yourself. Uh, we have um, idles, we have moods, we have uh, move movement motions, we have talking motions, and like I mentioned before, all of these are loopable, so they just loop over and over and over again. I can even have our character fight. I can just press preview or press the space hotkey, and you can see she'll go into a nice uh, boxing motion there. But that's not the one we're going to apply. We're actually going to go to the mood here, and we're going to go to this female dejected motion. And if I press space, notice that our character will stand up, and she'll have this dejected um, look on her face. Now, one cool thing we can do is we can actually mask out some of the body so that that animation only applies to the upper part of her body and the original animation of her sitting down will be maintained. 
So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go over to my mask tab here and I'm going to mask out my legs by clicking them and the midsection and uh, the uh, upper body there. And then if I press space right now, notice that she'll remain seated and she'll just have that disappointed look on her face again. And I can decrease the amount of exaggeration on that. I can decrease the speed to make it a little bit slower and uh, preview that one more time. Now you can see she'll be a little bit more uh, slow with her reaction there. So all I need to do to record this is just press the record button and then I can just press space to record. So let's record a couple seconds of this, maybe back and forth, something like that, and then press space to stop recording. I'm going to close this motion puppet down, uh, motion puppet window down right now. Like I mentioned, there's, there'll be other tutorials that are more specific on that tool. But let's press F3 and go into our timeline again. And then we see we have this puppet clip right here. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to take this puppet clip and we're going to click and drag it so it's closer to the other puppet clip. Now if I go over here and I just uh, hold the Alt key and scroll in on my mouse, notice that we can zoom in on the timeline here. And we have this little area right here. If I zoom in this area right here, if I just scroll, scrub back and forth in this area right here, you can see this is what we call our transition area. So this is where it's transitioning from this motion here to this motion here. Now if I want this transition to be slower, I can click and drag this transition area to be a little bit slower. Let's see what it looks like right now. So she'll sit down, cross her arms, and then zoop, it'll be really fast where she'll bring her hand up to her head and look disappointed. Now that doesn't look very realistic. So what we want to do is we want to expand this transition area, maybe by uh, uh, 30 or 40 uh, frames right there. And let's go back to the middle here. And then you can see that'll be a much more realistic timing for her disappointed look on her face. And then after she's finished that, what we want to do is we want to reapply that motion. Uh, this time we want to apply the sit to stand motion in her persona. So when I right click on my character and I select perform, I can now select sit to stand and then she'll just stand up right here. She'll just pop to and then stand up. And when that's finished, you see we have a motion clip that will appear in our timeline again. And this one's after our motion puppet clip. So what I can do for this one is uh, drag this one over as well. And we can just drag it so it's overlapping the uh, first clip and we can, uh, I'm going to blur out that uh, wardrobe malfunction. You can also turn off physics as well. Um, so we can just uh, play back and you can see our character will snap to really quickly like that. And we want to, of course, um, cut that or rather expand that transition time. But what I'm going to do before that is notice that there's a whole section of time here where she's just sitting and she's not really moving. Uh, now that area of time, I want to cut that out. And I'm going to show you how to modify the motion clips uh, by cutting them up. So let's go ahead to maybe about here when she's about to start moving. And I'm going to right click on this clip and then select break. And that's going to break my sit to stand clip into two parts. Let's hold the alt key and scroll out uh, to zoom out a little bit here. Now you can see we have the sit to stand 01 and sit to stand 02. Now what I'm going to do is delete the first clip right here. And that's going to shorten my second clip. It's going to cut out all that little area where she's just sitting there and doing nothing because we want a faster transition. So let's go ahead then and click and drag this one all the way over so it's overlapping the first clip. And then let's uh, go a little bit further back on the timeline here. And I'm going to expand our, this transition area here. And let's see if this works out here. There we go. That looks pretty natural. So she stands up. And after she stands up, we want her to begin walking. So another way to apply uh, motions to your character, another easy way to do that, is actually to go to the motion library. And that's where this uh, animation tab it comes in handy here. You can go in here. And then we have this motion uh, folder right here. And then we have these uh, G6 uh, motion subfolders. I'm going to double click this content window and just uh, bring it out and expand it a little bit so we can see a little bit better. We have uh, G6 Mason, we have G6 Gwyn, or rather G5 Gwyn, and G6 Heidi. Now we want to apply one of Heidi's motions because those are suitable for the Heidi character that we have on the screen here. And then I want to go to perform. And what we're going to do is we're going to perform a catwalk. So I'm just going to double click this content window again to dock it again and click on the content tab. And all I want to do now is just simply apply this catwalk motion. Let's go ahead and do that. And our character will jump a little bit forward and she'll begin to walk forward like this. She'll do her little pose at the end of the catwalk there and then she'll walk back. 
Now there's a couple things we want to do with this clip and I'll show you what to do in just a moment. That will pretty much take up our entire project. So that's all the animations we're going to apply. We're going to use one more tool in just a moment. But before we do that, I'm going to press F3 again in the timeline and I'm going to scrub all the way back to the beginning of that catwalk. And notice that right here, our character kind of slides forward. Let's zoom in our feet a little bit closer so we can see what I'm talking about. Now between this motion and this motion here, you can see our character slides forward. So either she's a ghost or we have some sort of animation error going on. So the fastest way to fix this is actually pretty easy. So you can see at the very beginning of this second clip here, we have this keyframe. Uh, this, this is a keyframe for the position of our character. Now what I want to do is go to my transform track. Now transform track basically means where the character is on the map. So when you're uh, adjusting the position of the character's entire body or, or of, a, of a prop or anything like that, every object in your scene will have a transform track and that just determines its position. So I'm going to hold the alt key, zoom in a little bit closer so we can see the individual frames here. And I'm going to just double click this transform track right here. And that will add a keyframe for that character's position right there. And then at the end of this clip right here, or rather at the beginning of the uh, beginning of the transition right here, right at the beginning of the transition, the very first frame of the tra transition here, you want to make sure that you add another keyframe in the transform track. Okay, and notice that between here and here we have a little bit of sliding, which is not what we want. So just to kind of illustrate what the transform does, uh, let's go here, and I'm going to press the W hotkey, and that's going to bring up my character's gizmo. And I'm going to move my character way up here. And that's going to automatically add a transform keyframe right there. And then if I uh, play back, you can see my character will go from that point to that point. So what the transform keyframes do is they set a position uh, for your character at a, certain, at a certain point. So let's just go ahead and delete that middle one. We don't need that one right now. And let's go ahead and play back. And you can see that our character slides ahead. So we want the character to be at this position. Or rather, at this point, we want the character to be in this position. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at the shoes, try and be an ac as accurate as possible. So she's about an inch in front of the, or inch behind the uh, crevice in the sidewalk there. And let's go ahead to here, and let's just go ahead and bring her back to that position, about an uh, inch. I'm kind of just spitballing this here. So uh, now if we play back, you can see she'll begin her animation right there, and she will no longer slide. Now one thing we, we notice is that she kind of shifts her weight right here. Uh, if we didn't want that to happen, if we wanted her to start from like you know this position and just kind of just begin uh, stepping right away, again we can right click the uh, clip and we can break it so we don't have that uh, weight shifting in the middle there. And we can just select this part and delete it, and then we can just go ahead and move this clip all the way over again and make sure the keyframes are in the same position, the very beginning of the transition area and the very beginning of the clip. And let's see what happens here. So now we have this where she just steps like that. Maybe we can even just break it one more time where she's almost taking her first step and delete that first section there. Let's try that one more time. So now we have that whoop, she won't shift weight. She'll just step right away. So that's kind of a fast way to avoid any, any sort of foot sliding on your character. If you have your character sliding around for some reason, that's one of the quick fixes. There's other ways to fix that as well, which we'll discuss in other tutorials. Or you can also post on our forum um, for questions about that as well. So now we're going to have our character walk. And let's go ahead, um, back at that point, we're going to just go ahead and start from the beginning and zoom out and take a look at the uh, masterpiece we've created so far. So let's go ahead and close our timeline down and we'll have our character sit down. She will do her... Uh, disappointed look and then she kind of gets over it she gets over whatever is bothering her stands up and decided she's a strong woman she's going to do a catwalk so there she is there she is doing her uh, sexy catwalk back and forth and then after the catwalk she just will turn around and this is the complete motion right here now we're going to apply one more motion we're going to use a different motion tool called direct puppet now to do that, I'm going to go back here to almost when she's finished her motion right here. And we're going to just play back. And about here, I want our character's head to move in a different way. So she's going to give kind of a sassy uh, sassy head turn um, at this point here. And this is where tools like the Direct Puppet tool come in very handy. 
and that can be found in the Motion tab right here under Direct Puppet. Now, Direct Puppet, you can actually modify each individual body part uh, by itself. If I press the, uh, if I click the head, for example, and I just uh, click Primary Rotation, which is uh, the head's primary rotation uh, back and forth, and I press Space, you can see I can whoop, just kind of uh, whip her head back and forth there. Don't worry about the dress right now. We're not going to worry about that for now. That's just some physics stuff that you can find out about in a separate tutorial. But basically, at this point here, I want our character to kind of give a, a, a sassy head flip. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and record this. And zoop, should kind of just go back over here and then kind of give a sassy look like that. All right, so basically that's uh, using the direct puppet. You can modify all sorts of other body parts on top of your clips. And we will have separate tutorials on this tool uh, as well because it's much more complicated than I'm showing here. So don't fret about that right now. Let's just close the direct puppet down and press F3, go into our timeline one more time and hold the Alt key and scroll out. And then we have this puppet clip right here. You, can, you may be able to uh, notice that we have a number of different clips. Uh, so this is the first clip. This is the catwalk right here. And then this is the puppet clip that we added in. And the only difference this puppet clip makes is that this is the clip that we are using for our direct puppet. So let's go back here, play back and our character will just kind of give her sassy, uh, you know, head flip back and forth. Now you'll want to make sure that when you use Direct Puppet, you use, the rec use Direct Puppet, you record right until the very end of your motion clip. Otherwise, you may have some sort of jittering and stuff like that. If you cancel your Direct Puppet or if you stop it before your uh, puppet clip is finished, you may have some sort of weird transition uh, stuff like that going on, and it gets more complicated um, from there on. So make sure that you, when you're recording with your Direct Puppet, you record all the way to the end of your motion clip. All right, so there we've combined a number of different motion clips in a number of different ways. This is a basically a, a brief introduction to using uh, motion clips uh, in iClone just to, for simple animation and blending them together. So again, we're just blending that uh, body motion puppet there and we're masking the, uh, the legs out. She'll get up and do her catwalk, which we applied from the motion library. And then she will go back and we'll have that direct puppet uh, head flip and everything like that. So that's about it for this tutorial. Uh, we will have a part B of this tutorial where we focus more on keyframe editing and all that fun stuff. So stay tuned for that. We'll talk about uh, motion key editor right here, or edit motion layer tool. We'll also talk about the look at feature as well. So thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you learned something here and uh, hopefully you enjoy using iClone 6.